In August 2014, Bristol Council passed plans to build a dedicated metro bus junction in the northeast of the city. The city buses proudly bear a slogan heralding Bristol as the European Green Capital of 2015. But this scheme is far from green. The area scheduled for development is home to allotments for local people, a growing project providing sustainable food and valuable services for the community, including children and vulnerable adults, a wildflower meadow, groves of trees and other wild areas that provide foraging grounds for badgers, bats, bees and a whole host of other flora and fauna. Rising Up are a group who have established a camp to resist the development. This is their story. I found a little plot of land in a garden of Eden It was dirt and dirt is all the same I tilled it with my two hands in a cold in my very own There was no water to be so where we are now is um, the location where they're planning to build the bus only road and junction for the metro bus um, scheme. So the metro bus is a, it's, um, a transport scheme that covers three routes that run through Bristol. We're on one of the routes here which is from Hengrove to North Fringe of Bristol and basically the justification for this whole scheme is that it saves time on journeys and they say that it would get people out of their cars and into buses. I mean, they want to build this bus only road system to save literally minutes off of a journey when what they could do is just go and use Junction 1. They're not taking into account the fact that once land like this is gone, it's gone forever. It takes generations to build up this kind of soil. We hear it from the allotment holders all the time about like uh, that this has been handed down to me from my father and from my grandfather. Already a lot of bus services around here that serve the local population. But this land will be bisected, wildlife corridors will be shut down, uh, the allotments for the most part will go, this land here will go, these bees will go. So it's going to come all the way through here, so what we're going to lose, we've got these line of poplars, which are a brilliant windbreak for this bit of glade. We've got two oaks here, which I would put at about somewhere between 70 and 100 years old. So obviously once you get to that stage with an oak tree, they're supporting a lot of invertebrates, a lot of birds. It's the wildlife element. Feed Bristol have got badger sets on their site, but obviously this glade, this area, is going to be hugely important. And this woodland on the other side of the wildflower meadow is going to be hugely important. Foraging spaces for bats, for badgers, for birds. Well, the council have been very single-minded about this project from the beginning. I mean, if you dangle £200 million carrot in front of anybody, it's, it's a very tempting prospect. So the money was there for a transport project, and this was the one that they deemed the most suitable, despite massive opposition. And it, it has felt like they haven't wanted to listen to the real voices, the opinions of the local people here. When they came to looking at the planning um, objections, they said quite openly that they were really going to thoroughly take on every single objection and it seemed to last only a couple of hours, that process of going through hundreds and hundreds of letters um, set against, you know, coming along to many numerous site visits with contractors and it seemed like the deals were already in place before, you know, it was actually put through a given planning commission. It's not about not having buses. It's about really being long-term in, in the way that we try and implement our green strategies and build a road on best and most versatile land. It's, it's insanity. I found here personally, turning up not really knowing anyone and just being just overwhelmed by the welcome, the trust, the love and just the help. You ask for help, you can have it, it's yours. Do you know what I mean? You ask for love, a hug, a bit of support, it's yours and everything's just gelled so well together. People have turned up, you know, there is no hierarchy, there isn't a boss and people have just turned up and done stuff and got it done and that's how this has all happened and people have just cooperated and it's been so simple, 
makes me think it could be this simple the world over. What I would like to see is this becoming a long-term camp where we have uh, workshops here, forest schools, uh, where we can grow on the land so it becomes uh, a community hub. We really need more people involved in this. We really need, um, you know, physical support, financial support. We need, you know, the knowledge and skills of people that could really help us push this forward. What's really going to make a difference to this campaign is people rising up. Is the people of Bristol just coming on board, coming to site, making their presence felt on the Facebook page, through the website, through emails, and showing the council that actually this is something that they don't want to happen. Both in equal parts are welcome to come along, oh, I'm inviting you.